Welcome to this recording of our first ever live public blab talk that we had on the internet yesterday with Karen Bascombi of Tech for Agri in Trinidad. The first part of the interview was a bit challenged in terms of technology and connectivity and we covered hydroponics and why it's important for agriculture in developing country contexts. We're skipping that in the recording and jump straight to the later part of the recording. I was in hydroponics interesting for young persons. So I was saying that um, the it allows it allows you to be creative in in terms of being able to come up with different ideas, come up with a different type of system, come up with um, solutions. And that's that's the whole positive flip side to it is that you when you when you are doing things on your farm enterprise it's not just doing it because it's fun or crazy it's doing it to solve a problem so that when you solve that problem you make your enterprise more efficient and and that's what you want in the long run you want productivity you want profitability so it it then makes the whole experience much more interesting much more rewarding and fulfilling so that's what i think technologies like hydroponics bring to agriculture for young persons. So in a way, are you saying that the fact that you can go out and use technology in, in, in different ways seems to be appealing to youngsters who want to try out things, or want to use technology and uh, get away from the, the image of having to dig in the dirt forever and ever and uh, then wait if rain, if it rains or not, so to speak. Yeah. A little bit the cliche, but maybe that's in the head of people. Is that what what you're saying? Yes, exactly. It's it's much more interesting that way. It's much more fulfilling and it's much more appealing. Exactly what that's exactly. Okay. What about? I mean, let's take when we talk about technology, we have also have technology the way you use it, um, mm -hmm. using it for communications. Do you think maybe you can elaborate a little bit on what, what you think, um, how you can actually use videos to share with others, uh, social media, YouTube? I mean, there's a lot of different platforms, as we know. Mm -hmm. Is there a tip, a clue from your side there? What, what's a good way to do this and also to just enhance and get others uh, moving into that area? For me, I think... Um communication and video video tools they it's it has barely scratched the surface in terms of agriculture media has a a great role to play in people's perceptions and if we really and truly feature the successes or you know the different technologies or the different types of sectors and fields and and careers that they are in this are in agriculture and really showcase just how important it is as a basic necessity that we have to have everyday food, then it can really change people's overall outlook. In terms of within agriculture and for, for farmers, that share, not that sharing of information, that, that knowledge sharing, it is very, very important. Here in the Caribbean, there seems to be a huge issue with that, and that there, there would there would be knowledge, but it just would literally take years to get from one point to another and it shouldn't because in country we're already so tiny you can't see us on the map of the world so there should not be a reason why information can't get from one source to a farmer or some other persons who need it in a, in you know in a day with the technology that we have or from one island to the next because as small islands even though we 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 are caribbean and we say we are the caribbean community and we we are supposed to operate as a region we are very disjointed disconnected and one problem you would find in one island would also be found in another island but only one island would have the solution and the the the, the that knowledge of how to solve the problem will not reach to the other island until there's some sort of conference or somebody actually took to, took their time to use the technology, create a video, create, you know, some sort of outlet to share this information. And then also on the flip side to that, there's the at other end of the farmers themselves or the producers not having the skills or the tools to receive the information 
and then give feedback. So this is where young people would come in again because they are all, you know, we have all the technology. I mean, look at how many pieces of technology I use today alone, a tablet, a phone, and now I'm on the computer and I'm able, to, we are able to communicate, we are able to get the interview done despite the problems that we had. And that's the whole point, we need the information to be shared because that information empowers people and it allows people to move beyond the scope of things and improve their situation. So I think that's how I think um, the information, how my aspect, my argument journalism can be useful in this situation. You know, when I looked at your, uh, looked at your video, what I liked about it is that in a way that it's obvious that you didn't have a donor behind you that said, Karen is the guy and then he's going to get the whole tech team. He's going to get the support. You're going to get you a video guy and a sound guy. And, you know, if you would have moved the camera around, there would have been one guy standing like this, the other one. It's obvious that you do the whole thing on on your own. And there is certain limits. Obviously, sound could be better and the voiceover could be started in the beginning. But that's the appeal because... When we talk about social media, it's all about social proof, isn't it? So, yeah. I mean, that's the, one of the buzzwords. And then we have also the world where people have all these Latin terms, information sharing. And, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of clinical. So if I want to do agriculture and I want to hear proper language. So uh, I think... Maybe you can tell us a little bit how, how that plays a role in sort of building your community, not just as, a, as becoming just followers for you, but, you know, to build that community that sort of buzzes within to encourage people to just go and, and do it uh, and, and, and create the video, get it out there and, and maybe talk to you about it. Maybe you can tell us a little bit how you feel about that. Well, it's something that, I, I, I would say, I mean, it's difficult because I know there are things that can be improved upon in the videos, but I think it's necessary because the, in, a, in a few ways, the, the web series, it's, I have a small team, <laughs> so it doesn't look like me alone, but I do have help sometimes. And uh, we, what we are doing, I'm probably one of the few persons that are focusing journalism in agriculture. So, by doing this, by using these different technologies, we are showing that we have another avenue, another career path for young persons in the field. And then they can see, you know, well, oh, well, I could do a better job than that. And then they could, you know, be encouraged to take up their own video camera and do their own thing, film their own, do whatever they want, a movie, a film, anything they want. But once it's really, you know, it's in the field, and we need as much as we can get to really change that perception, as I thought, as I said. Also, the whole web series, it's supposed to be a business. It's supposed to be an, an enterprise. So starting off small like this and, and, and growing and trying to do better and improving upon it, it's, to me, it's like a rite of passage. And because it's out there and it's out there in the public, then everyone can see where we were and how we will be, which I hope to God will be really good in the future. So I, I, I think it's something that has to happen. And as, it, as things, as time passes, it will improve and we will have full production team <laughs> in a, a okay. couple of years. And then, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then uh, people are paid a thousand dollars a day and flying in to just do the, <laughs> the production. Sure. Great. But, um, before that, you also want to sort of get paid for what you do in a way. It needs to at least sustain itself uh, in a way. That's, that's usually where people start out and just sustain yourself or starters. And that's, that's good enough that the family doesn't sort of pay in and hope that, that uh, you know, the, the youngster's website is going to take off. And, and they, but until then, how do you feel about the whole marketing. I mean, there's also a lot of communications about marketing. And I remember from the past and conversations with you that that was quite, quite something that was important for you, not just the production, obviously the video 
uh, for that sort of stuff, it's much better to sh show agriculture, hydroponics. You can show, you know, you have visuals and you can talk to people. The marketing side is probably end up more talking heads. But do you see that there's a, all along that value chain that uh, that you uh, could look into sort of encouraging people there as well with uh, video? Yes, definitely. I think so. Um, there are a lot of agribusinesses along the value chain that depend on on um, social media and ICTs. Some 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 of them, their businesses cannot run without you know the internet and being online. Whereas others simply run their whole business off of Facebook or off of Instagram or something like that. So there is room for them to capitalize on video itself because there's a lot of uh, another a buzzword out there is social video, which are all these different types of videos that are very engaging. Some of them are very short. Some of them are, you know, they they are very non-traditional in, in the sense that they are giving you pertinent pieces of information, but they are funny. You know, they help the businesses. They provide them with. They provide the for the businesses. They will provide knowledge of the businesses, products, and sort of engage with them more on one-on-one -on -one terms, which is what social media is supposed to do. So there is room, a whole lot of room for greater use of video in the whole value chain in terms of the various agribusinesses along the value chain. So um, I would definitely think that Tech for Agri would be, you know, assisting these different businesses in getting their, getting their you know, getting them up to speed on video production and using that to the advantage of the different businesses. What, what is a good example for uh, uh, something along the value chain that, that really needs some propping up that could be covered? Anything? I mean, are you looking at international marketing or are you just looking at uh, sort of uh, making, you know, processing food and then to and taking it to the market locally or what, what is your no i will i was thinking regionally because there there are so many products that come out that come out of the various islands different businesses people are very very creative in, in what in what they do with food how they use it for example there's a business here in Trinidad called market movers and they do not grow any food they they have established a network of greenhouse producers who they lease with directly, and then they prepare different product bundles and deliver it to business homes and businesses and corporate entities and so forth. And they have decided that they want to go a step further in the value chain and provide a, an, an, an event every month. They call it farm dining. They, it, they call it the moving table. So they go to an open space or they go to an agritourism place. So there they are bringing in another aspect of the of the um, value chain. So they would go to a cook, uh, cocoa estate, for example, cook someone who has refurbished or brought back a cocoa estate and started producing you know, more cocoa and other vegetables. They have a nice event space where market movers can get chefs. So that's another aspect of the value chain. Go to the Cocoa Estate, which represents the agritourism, and then bring all the local produce from the greenhouse producers and have them have an event for customers who can then, you know, come and sit down and have a meal that is, is gourmet style, but you're eating local food. So just that, and what they have done, which really makes everything come together, is that everything that everything is on Instagram and Facebook. They are, have done videos. They are partnered with another um, another group, someone like myself. It's called Eat a Food in, in Trinidad um, dialect. <laughs> and it's the, just like me, he has a blog on it, but it's a food blog, and he started doing videos. So he videotaped the activities, the whole moving table, and then I did an episode on market movers. So by our two activities, by bringing this video and this communication tool, the customers can see what what the whole process was. And we can now see the whole value chain laid out there, which people don't really realize 
all they think about is you know their end product, their end produce. So that's an example of how beneficial it can be. And that was just the efforts of one business that branched out into other businesses and other individuals, the chefs, the producers, and so forth. And there's a lot of room for that across the region because that's just internet out alone with one company. And there are so many other companies, you know, across the island chain. So we have room for value chains across the islands rather than within the islands. So I think there's a whole lot more room for that. And the only way we can see it and know of it is with the communication tools, the video production. Talking about the communication tools, do you think in your region there that there is a, a need for more healthy foods, for less processed foods? Um, because the, I get the feeling that quite often the, the big companies, even though maybe they're not that big in, 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 in Trinidad, but might be other companies pushing in from the outside, the more they process usually the worse the food is in terms of nutritional value and the more you pay for it because you it seems you know you, you need to pay somebody else to to spend energy and time and flying it around and and whatever where do you see your sort of role there in communicating also to healthy less processed or process on your own and move into that direction especially with the youngsters uh, on a sort of longer time scale to, to get some, some positive outcome there in the end? Well, right now that's a bit up in the air because we have the set topics of technology, innovation, climate change, and successes in agriculture specifically. Whereas that, I know they are linked clearly, it's but people will just see it as food. And that's more of a nutritional aspect because we do have high levels of non-communicable diseases and they are, there is a very big foodie network here. There's a very big health conscious network, but there's also a very large uh, percentage of the populations that you know are eating unhealthy foods and eating fast foods and so forth. So it's, it, it's sort of like its own other huge aspect, its own problem that needs to be really tackled in its own sense, if I can put it like that, it, it's it's like it's so big that of an issue that to sort of sort of fit it into something that we just started would be a bit too much. So maybe in the long run, it could work. We could, you know, I mean, we're gonna need topics in the future, and it's an it's a serious issue that needs to be tackled. But there are already a number of agencies and a number of persons that are working on it. As I said, there's a large health conscious um, vibe going on throughout the region. So we will sort of ease off on that topic for now because we just started. We, we only have five episodes and we only plan for 12 this season. So, okay. yeah. Is there a, a percentage of people, would you say, under the youngsters that, that might think if I produce something Cajun food, whatever, process it or not, and that can be exported to the United States or something, I can make the big bucks out of this? Is, is, is that a, an issue, something that, that people might go into that direction and think not regionally, but actually find a niche and, and get, uh, you know, high quality or exotic food in, in a way? I'm saying that because I've, I used to work with a, a livestock outfit of the African Union in Nairobi, and they were looking at commodity-based uh, trade into the EU, and Botswana had had found a way to actually, uh, you know, cut up meat, cattle, um, cow meat, whatever, and then get it into the EU, uh, which was usually not possible because they kept a number of, of rules and regulations. So then they started thinking about, oh, that's the way to get into the EU. And they sort of promoted that as a policy idea for all the EU, or they wanted for all the AU countries to get into the EU market, which probably wouldn't have worked in the end. But um, so that's where I'm coming from. Is there, is there, first question maybe, is there a possibility that this technically would be an avenue for you, for you to think for, for youngsters to look at in this niche, exotic product for the, for the, for the, 
markets with more money around the corner. Um, and secondly, is that something that some youngsters uh, uh, may be looking at? Yes, definitely. There are persons that do exactly that, where they they ship their produce or some sort of exotic food. Well, it would seem exotic to, you know, to where it's being exported to. There are persons that ship directly to niches, you know, a supermarket chain or a couple of supermarkets in the USA, in, in parts of, of Europe, different countries and whatnot. And that's to serve not, not only the the general population who want exotic foods, but also for the Caribbean diaspora, because even though we're small, there's a, quite a few of us out there. There's a saying, you can find a Caribbean person anywhere in the world. And there usually is, you know, someone, you know, someone with some sort of relation to the Caribbean and familiar with Caribbean food and they are looking for it, even though they, you know, they may be living there for, you know, they may have migrated or they're there for a set period of time. There's a market there, not just for general population and exotic foods, but for the Caribbean diaspora who just want that Caribbean flavor of foods. So it is a definite avenue. The only the only setback is that it takes a whole lot of prerequisites and a whole lot of regulations to go through in order to properly and safely export these goods. Automatically, mm -hmm. un unfortunately, because of you know the past activities of different agencies or different businessmen and so forth, you you have all these rules where it is necessary and it's there because you have to ensure food safety. So it's that's the only setback and it will it will actually take you a couple of years to you know really and truly export it. Well I I recently met uh, um well I met back up with them. I had met them once before and then I met them again about two years it's two years in the future now and they are seeing they are now finishing up with their regulations in terms of HACCP, which is um, what is it? Hazard analysis and control points, and um, what is it? SPS, yeah, the sanitary and phytosanitary. Yeah. yeah, they they took it. Actually, took them to three years to get it done, and they are one of the largest producers in um in the in Suriname. They're from Suriname, which is not an island; it's in South America, but it's still part of the Caribbean. And they already export to Holland directly. They have niche markets there. But in order to get into other European markets and to the USA market, they had to go through these procedures. And it takes them two to three years. They need to be sure. You need to pay for all of the professionals to come down and evaluate your stuff and then evaluate it again and again and again over the course of how many months. And that's just one. You know, So they, they were trying to get all of the requirements at the same time. So that's why it took them that long. Hmm. Well, so that's the yeah, unusual. Suriname is a, is a former colony of Holland. Eh? Mm -hmm. I would I would suspect that this is going towards Surinamese restaurants very much. Eh? And it's not probably so much for own consumption because I would assume that this is not such large quantities of that type of food that could be shipped in, in such a way that immigrants in another country would want to live off this on it. You know, I mean, that sounds, mm -hmm. doesn't, so I would assume it's probably for, for, for a certain amount of restaurant supplies. Yeah. That is. With the, with the Jamaican and, and, and Trini as well. No, I think, I think for, for other islands like Jamaica and Trinidad, it's, it's specific products. So, you know, you would find the typical thing to find is pepper sauce or some type of, you know, dried peppers, seasonings, certain seasonings that you can't get anywhere else or you won't get the same variety. You, you, For example, there's a seasoning here. It's called Shadow Benny. It's, it's, it has an odd Sounds spelling. very hot. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not hot. It's just a, it's, it's a, a wild bush of seasoning that grows here. And apparently it doesn't grow anywhere else in the world. The, the closest variety to it is cilantro, and but the flavor is different. 
So that seasoning is exported, but you know, very small, specific niche markets. So you would find that for the smaller islands, they would, you know, focus on these few products to these, di these direct links, these direct chains. Whereas with, you know, these larger countries like Suriname, they, yes, they do go, I would say for the restaurants to provide certain aspects, certain products. Yeah, and that's, that we're closes the circle again with the communication for me, at least, you know, that you know, certain images of certain countries are, are, are promoted by visuals and also by food. And that's that's where you can get your market, I guess. And even your kind of videos could 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 go somewhere else if you give it a different slant and, uh, you know, show the production of things that uh, mm -hmm. I think it makes it gives it a certain appeal, you know, that the end product or so. Yeah. What? is your uh, sort of wish if you if you think you know with uh, helping promoting marketing value chains the whole the whole uh, thing what, what is your wish where could um, support be done in a way that really would help your endeavors i'm not talking about obviously i could go for a larger camera a bigger team you know or the whole world if i had all this then it would be better you know the, the typical sort of recommendations list but do you have something that's critical maybe counterintuitive um meaning that you that other people wouldn't think okay if you give me more money i could get more things out or I could buy more productive means or whatever mm -hmm. is there anything that you think that would help sort of acknowledgement by certain people by certain agencies or you know, something is there anything that comes to your mind there well we would we already have that linkage per se with you know the different agencies and because of a couple of episodes we've already featured some of them already but it the the interaction is limited i would say and we could do it more of that but on the what the real answer i would give to this question is that the whole it might not look like a whole lot in the final production and what you finally see on YouTube, but it does take a lot of behind the scenes work, you know, making the calls, getting around and all of that. And without, mm. without a, you know, direct investment, it's difficult to, you know, cover all of those costs. So, and then the, we need, I need to be able, I have a volunteer team and I need the team to be able to be there when they when they're needed and i can only do that as with young people by providing them with an income so that's the aspect that people don't realize in doing this job you need to be flexible you have to deal with producers you have to deal with cancellations you have to deal with you know delays you have to deal with the weather you have to deal with you know things that that delay production that put things behind that put things off schedule costs that suddenly come up that suddenly appear and people don't realize. for example we had an interview yesterday only to find out that one of my team members was in an accident and his car is not available he did, he's okay but you know there's not a car and then the other team member who has a car her car is not functioning so now we have no transport to go and do the interview and people don't realize these these little problems come up so this is why we would say we would need more support in terms of being able to cover these kinds of costs and in terms of um, having that income because not having, we still have responsibilities. Yes, we are young, but we are young, responsible adults. We have responsibilities. We have commitments. We have, you know, like everyone else, we have built space. So these things sort of suffer and trying to accomplish this dream, these things sort of suffer because it needs, it's at that stage where it needs that attention where you may not be able to hold down a full-time job. So that's the, and do it at the same, I know that's a, a thing with entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs say you can do it, you can hold down a full-time job and do your small business on the side until it's ready to grow. But, you know, when you're very passionate about something and it reaches a certain stage, you have to sort of let things go. So I, my strategy is to hold on a part-time job and live and try to build the business as much as I can full-time. So I'm switching things around a bit. 
but it's still very difficult with in terms of cost, in terms of not having an income, in, well, a proper income, and in terms of um, facing these delays that people are unaware of. And these types of delays, some if you had the support of various agencies and organizations, if if people knew that they were backing you, like they are supporting you, yes, but if they did more to make that support visible, then then you, you, your chances of reducing these other factors that become problematic is much, much better. Um, I would say two things that I recognize here that uh, from my observation, you know, is that you're not really youngsters in, in a sense, you're young adults. So mm -hmm. that makes things maybe a little bit easier because in terms of empowerment and so forth, obviously there's a sort of an age sort of barrier where would you someone would say you know as an adult you can't really empower kids that are 17 to run run their business that's uh that's probably not going to be working mm -hmm. so you, you're not really that young so that's one thing that i observed the other thing is what you describe is not really something that is unique to agriculture development that's not unique to to young or middle-aged or or women or it's basically a typical scenario where you where you tell people you want to get some more entrepreneurial spirit in and you get all these histories and stories of uh, who you name it richard branson whatever they take risks and they failed 15 times but nobody's really acknowledging that they might have had some cash in the back to take the risks you mm -hmm. know because i mean how can you take 15 times a risk and fail i mean it's, you know must have been getting from somewhere. So if you with your if you with your back much closer to the wall, and even if it's not your own money, but your society sort of provides you much more safety net in in a way, then you can do all that. So what I'm saying that is that's probably not really a, a, a unique thing to use in agricultural development in a way. But still, I would wish for 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 you to find a way, and maybe you're probably on the right past there that some people see what you're doing and and uh, you might have to have that donor sort of relation but you see that there is a slow way to get things a bit going and that there's actually an added value in that in, in terms of the society maybe some uh, some donor will will see that though there's obviously a certain things about donor help by donors and the entrepreneurial spirit that's we, we know all that that this is sometimes not really going hand in hand that well so any particular wish in in that sense what do you think which is the sort of right communications path for you what, what do you think would be the best way for you to happen there um I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I right. I would say TechRise. It's very much a work in progress. Um, I it was always something I thought that you know, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it in a couple of years, and and then uh, well, I I was inspired, and I said, you know what, I'm going to start and just get into it and get going and see how it goes. So I when when I got the team together, I let them know that hey, this is a uh, a work in progress. It's something that definitely would need to be improved upon. We need to find our balance between professionalism and something that would appeal to young persons. So it's, uh, I see, I see, a, I have an idea where I would like it to go, but it's to make it happen that's uh, a slow going or a work in process that's not yet worked out. So we're learning as we're going. So in terms of what our tools we use, we use the mobile journalism and whatnot. We have that part done, we could do that well, but in terms of storytelling and presentation and 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 production issues like audio and whatnot, we it, those things are a work in progress. So we'll see how it happens in the future. One idea from my side, and I think then you probably we're probably finished. Yeah, is if if these big companies create new innovative uh, technology. I saw that you obviously try to 
you know, open up the technology notion a little bit and say, you know, making things out of certain fabrics and plastics and metal and sort of do that yourself, apply it. That's part of the idea of using technology. It doesn't mean that you have to buy high tech from somewhere else. But if you, if you would find these sort of things and, uh, and, and, and you make a series out of that and you sort of cover the application in your scenario so you get a certain way, a certain tool, a certain thing, and you, you could get that maybe sponsored in a way from the producer of that technology and you, uh, you, know, you, have it, you show it how it's shipped into the country, you show it to the people, mm -hmm. they first don't know what to do about it, you show them how the... United States farmer is using that in his scenario. And then, you know, you could give it a, a little bit over time period, cover that, how that works. And that may, maybe you would find somebody who uh, at least supports that in some way. That's just an idea from my side. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I do like that whole do it yourself aspect. And it's something we want to incorporate in the future because, you know, people want to see. I always get that. I always get. Up to yesterday, I got an, uh, a message on Facebook of people asking me for, you know, contacts and, you know, information of how can they go start doing hydroponics themselves. And I, and I have to unfortunately say, well, you know, there's not that much information. There's only a couple of businesses. And sometimes you, you may not get the best price for all your, you may be robbed <laughs> too much money for your equipment and whatnot. You have to get it online. And, and that, Sometimes that doesn't really work. I think particularly here in, in this part of the world, people need sort of that handholding to see, well, this is what we are going to do. This is what you need to do. This is the equipment. This is the tools. Try it and show you the step-by-step -step process. And it's something that we want, I would like to very much include into the series, um, particularly as we want to try to get the series on TV and having six minutes on TV is not much. So we need, you know, but this is like TV. I mean, it's just only a couple of few people watching now. But I mean, I know, right? <laughs> well, this is a live interview. That's TV, yeah. But the <laughs> series itself is just a web series, so it's not that many, much minutes. Yeah. So we need to. I would like to see it when it gets on TV. Then it may be, you know, we can play with longer airtime. Mm -hmm. Just a segment would really work. Okay. There. I think we now we came to about an hour that's what we were looking for in the beginning we had some time in between obviously with the connectivity problems thanks for everybody who still stuck with us here now yeah. um we'll take the recording and chop out all that delay time in between and see if if uh, what we're going to do about the whole thing mm -hmm. it was the first one a try with yeah. all the technical glitches uh, and all that but i think yeah we can do this again yeah with karen maybe we also have somebody else maybe next time somebody feels uh, happy to join in and ask some questions also if if there is somebody still now i haven't really invited anyone right now but feel free to just uh, uh request to come on and ask a question otherwise i would say there's a number of things that we can talk about maybe in two weeks again uh, maybe more about the the youth uh, involvement and what could be done about uh, the youth factor a little bit more and but or we come up with some other subject so, so if people out there want to suggest something for us to talk about uh, feel free to do that otherwise i would say we we managed quite well yeah. to get a halfway decent <laughs> conversation going yeah. again. we covered the subjects that we wanted and uh, in the end the whole connection works well yeah. It was good. It was interesting. We even had some on site visitors. Yeah, there. we did. <laughs> and that this okay. also helped, helped us to resolve these technical issues. <laughs>